Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I am going to retest the Super Venture Star, or Super Star as I like to call it for short. And this is the enlarged Venture Star with 24 RS-25 engines at the bottom. And I'm going to test its payload capacity again. I want to try and push that a little bit with a better uh, launch trajectory. And also test its re-entry a bit. And in particular, one of the comments said that the canards would be problematic during re-entry because of plasma and all that business. So I have put it on infernal robotics hinges, uh, the canards I mean, and so they tuck in and go out. This is uh, potentially going to cause problems for the controllability. Who knows if the symmetry works right. I have at least taken the liberty of increasing the max temp on all of the infernal robotics parts because otherwise it would probably burn up and so they all have a nice amount of temperature tolerance and I also mark them all as realism overhaul compatible just for the heck of it for my own purposes of course they're not officially realism overhaul compatible but I was sick of seeing the non RO tech so anyway we are going to try this out and see what goes wrong as usual and we have 50 tons in the cargo bay the cargo bay is not very obvious because of the texture but uh, there it is and there is our 50 tons all right so last time we tried 45 tons because that was the requirement that is what i needed out of the super venture star but we will see uh, i think it's dry mass is probably just too high it should be getting a better payload capacity it's just not right now so anyway but that we'll set aside for now and let's see how it goes I'm just going to have it use the same launch script as the Venture Star, and let's tuck in those uh, canards again, and we'll see how it goes with the same launch script. Okay. Uh, well, something's going wrong there. Um, great. Well... It seems to refuse to go to the angle that I wanted it to go to. Okay, it goes to that one. And then something is blocking it from going past 50. This is a new thing happening that I have not experienced before. Does it have, like, collider issues? Okay, so... To the person who wanted the canards folded up, um, I tried, but it's not working right now. We'll test the hinges, of course. So in principle, it could have the canards folded up. It's just that Infernal Robotics is not working right right now. It is supposed to be able to do that and go to the angle that would have it folded up, but it is apparently not willing to do that right now. So we will set that aside for now, and we will launch it. And off it goes. The launch clamp release sound was a little bit delayed though. Oh, those those things are flapping all over the place. Um, oh, that's not good. Uh, alright, alright, well that didn't work. <laughs> Um, I'm sure that means that they wouldn't have been able to control pop properly during descent either, even if we had locked it now. Okay, well, um, oh, yeah, that's not good. Okay, I have decided that we're going to relaunch this and just remove the hinges for now. This experiment clearly has gone awry. The problem is, I don't know how to make something like Infernal Robotics things that can have something moving at their endpoint. Normally with animations, you can't have something attached to it and expect it to move, and Infernal Robotics really is like magic. Uh, its uh, folder is Magic Smoke Industries. And yeah, I don't know 
how to make a hinge like that while still having the control surface be able to actuate and everything. Of course, I could just create an animation where they fold up and go down, but then I can't have them do their canard thing. So uh, I am going to remove the hinges for now, and we'll just have to pretend that they're folded up during re-entry. And so we'll still test re-entry and we are testing the payload capacity at 50 tons right now. Nice view of our ascent over Cape Canaveral. Of course we have to get to orbit with enough delta V to come back down, that's one of the catches. One reason this might underperform the normal Venture Star is that for the aerospikes I concluded that their surface ISP, their surface efficiency, was higher than normally stated and higher than for the RS-25s. So, and that was just based on logic, based on what they uh, stated was their thrust at sea level compared to their thrust in vacuum. And that higher efficiency at sea level certainly helps in terms of the payload capacity. Well, it's still got a lot of thrust. I need to let it shut down some engines. I forgot about that. It probably can't just work off of the regular Venture Star script. I'll need a Super Venture Star one where it shuts down half of the engines at this point. Its G force is obviously too high. And its apoapsis is getting out of whack. Yeah, there's unacceptable G forces, obviously. And un un unacceptable periaps. Unacceptable apoapsis, I mean. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and we've got to deal. This is 1.12 again. So once again, we have to deal with residuals. And I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot that we had to deal with residuals. And so our display delta V turns out to be not what our actual delta V was. There seems to be more hydrogen than I was expecting there, too. Okay, well, let me allow it to turn off some engines. So I'll action group some engines, and then we'll try again with a altered launch script. Okay, so I've modified the launch script so that I'll turn off some of the engines, and I've called it Superstar now, just so I don't have to type in Super Venture Star or anything. So let's see how it does. Okay, we have our first engine shut down in order to control the thrust weight ratio. Okay, well, it controlled the ascent, but we're not ending up with enough here. And that's because of residuals. The uh, blasted residuals. 1.17% adds up, apparently. Okay, well, let's uh, shut down those engines and see, well, we still don't have enough with the OMS engine. Oh, the OMS engine does not seem to have the stated delta V either. Great. Okay, well, yeah, we can't get uh, 50 tons up. Definitely not with the residuals, so any attempt to increase the payload capacity of this has not worked out. However, we are on a suborbital trajectory, so we can test that. Let me just uh, get rid of the thrust here, open cargo bay, let go of the 50 tons. And we will do re-entry directly. We won't be landing at Cape Canaveral, that's for sure. But we'll just be able to see how it handles for now. Unfortunately, we're coming down on a nighttime side because we didn't actually complete orbit or anything like that, so that's a little bit sad. 
we really get a lot of lift, we might make it to Australia over here, though. Uh, maybe we can manage that. Who knows? I sort of doubt it. Okay, well, we are using some pitch authority here at 88 kilometers. It is trying to push the nose down. Uh, so our center of mass is too far back. Okay, we are at 80 kilometers, still using about the same amount of pitch, but we're using a lot of RCS fuel. Um, possibly we have enough, but it's tough to say right now. Well, we have overheating indicators on the engines and the body. Everything seems to be overheating now. Well, that has to happen at some point, otherwise we've put too much heat tolerance, right? And I don't think the RCS is going to hold. We're using too much of the fuel. I'll move the center of mass just a little bit in the configuration. It'll just be a fraction of a meter in order to try and balance it better. It's mainly the engines, which, you know... I guess we could put a body flap in, but that's extra dry mass. Now remember, this was modeled as basically a skin around four space shell external tanks, and it has way more mass than four space shell external tanks. So we could do with reducing the dry mass. Of course, that would just directly benefit our payload capacity, but maybe we should have better payload capacity than we we're getting because. This is many times, it's about three times larger than Venture Star, but it's not getting three times the amount of mass to orbit. So I think it's a fair thing to make sure that it can, because normally when you scale up, you can get that benefit. Of course, I've mentioned the lower surface ISP of the RS-25s, but it's not that low, so... I think it's all down to the dry mass being maybe too much. We're probably going to go out of control once the RCS fuel runs out, the liquid oxygen, and well, maybe the hydrogen first. And then there's the whole business of the engines wanting to explode. But I think I'll reduce the body's dry mass at least to put in a body flap. And putting a, in a body flap will probably save us from having to move the COM to center of mass. So I'll undo that because the body flap will pull the center of lift back and then we'll have to reevaluate. But that'll protect the engines a bit, though I'm guessing their heat tolerance is just way low. It's only 574 Kelvin right now. Well, that changed our center of mass quite a lot. <laughs> Actually, now it's balanced. Well, maybe we should use that as a reference. If we let all 24 hours 25s explode, we're nice and balanced. I guess that figures. <laughs> uh, I might have accidentally designed this without the RS 25s in mind. I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to double check what the heat tolerance on the RS 25s themselves might be because. Below a certain point, even a body flap isn't going to help. Well, now we're lighter, <laughs> and we could glide a little bit further. Let's see where it ends up. Stay light and everything. Apologies for the horror of all the all the engines exploding. We are out of liquid and hydrogen, but it looks like the control surfaces are good enough to hold it right now. It's using liquid oxygen for some reason. I don't know, we're out of liquid hydrogen. It can't be using liquid oxygen for RCS, can it? Nope. Um... Maybe that's just boil off. That's tremendous boil off, though. RF boil off. 
Heat penetration, 1.9 megawatts. Maybe I should put some MLI layers in. Was that all... Uh, was it all, like, not RCS and it was all actually boil off that was taking away our fuel? Because, yeah, a few MLI layers might save us there. Um... I mean, it looks like we're already over land, but that's some serious boil off. But then again, this is huge and hot. I'm sort of impressed how balanced it is now and without any RCS. I mean, I'll just turn the RCS off. Well, I keep forgetting to do this, but I really don't want comms to interfere with our test of this thing, so I'm gonna disable the comms. Well, it's a shame that the body's balance is so good that we don't even need RCS at this point, but we have to put the darned RS-25s in the back. <laughs> but, uh, there we have it. Now I have to figure out when to pitch down so that we maintain our balance and don't stall. And maybe this thing will fly. I mean, the struggle with the Venture Star has been that it has trouble flying at lower altitudes. And this isn't a real test without the engines in the back, but it'll at least give us some idea whether the canards are doing what we need them to do as far as making it flyable. Even if we have the engines in the back, uh, that'll just basically increase the landing speed, assuming we have the center mass and center lift in the right places if the canards are doing enough work for the pitch authority. And we probably need to pitch down soon considering the pitch authority there. So I am going to start doing so and hope it doesn't uh, have an issue. Okay, well FAR says nominal flight status and we are just above Mach 3. Pitch is still good. Yaw is wiggling. Those little vertical stabilizers are interesting. Uh, the texture, there seems to be some texture tearing on that one. I don't know, it's a weird optical illusion. When we get close, it looks fine. But at a certain distance, it looks like part of it is turning differently, doesn't it? Or like it's getting squished or something. It's a weird optical illusion at certain distances when looking at those. This model is especially prominent here. That's, uh, I don't know why it's like that. It's like ghosting a bit. I mean, clearly not doing it here. I don't know why they're so fuzzy. I should probably make them a separate texture. Right now they're sharing the texture space with the body, so they're really small. But uh, maybe I should give them their own little texture space, uh, own texture file, so that they're a bit sharper. And I will switch to atmospheric op out now. Scala drag. We are decelerating very quickly while also descending. No need for air brakes. Well, as expected, the canards do seem to be giving us adequate pitch authority. Heck, they gave us adequate pitch authority even higher up when the atmosphere was relatively thin, so... Doing pretty well here. It's conceivable that I could lighten the thing up by reducing the size of the wings. Their mass is currently being calculated by far itself, based on their dimensions. Well, let's see what our touchdown speed ought to be. Here, some air brakes could have helped. Okay, well... We're getting to the limits of what kind of angle attack we can use here. Or touchdown so 120 meters per second which is not bad considering the size of the darn thing and we are down I think this is the first time I've actually landed the Venture Star isn't it 
Or, I mean, and this is a Super Venture star, but then again, we've lost the engines, and it's really bad to lose 24 RS-25s. But anyway, uh, progress, I guess, uh, somewhat. But I'll have to lighten the body a bit in order to make it capable of carrying what I think it ought to be able to carry. Uh, currently, the body itself, not including the wings or anything, any resources or anything like that, the dry mass of just the body is 215 tons. If we have just four external tanks from the shell program strapped together, that's only 100 and 105 tons, I think it is. Um, maybe, uh, maybe 106, 106, uh, depending on the version. Uh, so I think I'm going to reduce the 215 tons to about 192 tons and that'll still be way above four external tanks and that's that it's only four external tanks worth of fuel that we're carrying so hopefully that'll help out and allow us to put a body flap in so I'll work on that and check out the balance but at least it's sort of landed uh, granted without the engines and we'll see how it goes in future videos. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.